Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about some of the upset alerts all around the country. Definitely some big time teams that saw some CFP hopes that could go down this upcoming weekend and put their season in a very, very weird place going forward. But let's get into a couple of questions as we head into week 10 because there's definitely going to be a very interesting week ahead of us. There's a lot of different games and the biggest question I have is, is this weekend just a little bit too quiet? You have that big-time game over there in College Station. You have the game down in Dallas that I think is going to be really awesome. Outside of that, you don't necessarily have these big marquee games around the schedule. You have quite a few teams on a bye, LSU, Texas, among a number of Notre Dame's on a bye as well. A lot of teams that aren't necessarily uh, strapping them up this upcoming weekend, so... What happens? Is there an ability for a lot of people to be, you know, going out on a on a date night with their girlfriend on Saturday and be missing a huge game? Is there an ability for a family to go out to a pumpkin patch or go out to apple picking on a Saturday and miss one of the big time games in the uh, noon window? There is. This is a landmine Saturday if there ever was one. There is. It's one of those weekends where you just got to be smart. You got to make sure that you are locked in as, as much as you can be. Obviously, don't blow off any plans. I'm not saying that. But I am saying there's quite a few games out there that could totally change the way that we're looking at the college football world. That South Carolina A&M game, we talked about it. It could get interesting out there in Columbia and possibly knock a team off their pedestal and make that SEC race a little bit more confusing. And then you do have Georgia-Florida as well, another game that I think is going to get really interesting. We've seen a lot of these crazy matchups, and then there's always that NIU team out there. There's always that game out there. UMass is playing uh, Mississippi State this upcoming weekend. Mississippi State already lost to Toledo, so just one to watch out there. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of different things to watch. I think that Michigan game against Oregon, Maybe they can cause some problems and muck it up and get things interesting in that Oregon game. There's so many different games all around the country that at the very least could cause issues. At the very least can make things interesting. Kentucky could beat Tennessee, move them to two losses already on the season as they head into a Georgia game. Things would get interesting in a hurry over there. There are so many different things that could happen this upcoming weekend to just make things a little bit sketchy in this college football world. Maybe it'll help us out a little bit. Maybe it'll give us some answers. But at the end of the day, I think we know anything about 2024. They're not necessarily interested in giving us many answers this year. They're interested in making things a lot more complicated. It's very possible that this happened this upcoming weekend. So definitely be vigilant. I'm not saying blow off plans. I'm not saying, you know, leave your girlfriend in the lurch. I am saying make sure that you're locked in on this weekend because it could get very, very interesting in a hurry. And then we got to get to the under under the radar game of the week because that's obviously a huge part of this week with a lot of teams off with a lot of teams not playing those marquee games. You got to be on the lookout for some smaller games out there and I think Virginia Tech Syracuse is huge. We talked about Virginia Tech just a second ago. They're a team that can still make the CFP. They somehow have the ability to go to the ACC title, win it, and possibly be one of those teams in there. So this is a game they got to win. They're going on the road to a team that just got absolutely body bagged by Pitt and definitely a really, really tough game for them. Can Virginia Tech get that same uh, same juice from this game? It's going to be really, really fun to watch. And I think it's a battle uh, from start to finish, really, and kind of a battle of styles. And we'll get into that one a little bit more deeply tomorrow. Vanderbilt-Auburn is another game that I'm watching, and I'm watching it for that one guy. Diego Pavia is returning to Auburn, Alabama. He is 2-0 and against Hugh Freeze. He is one ago. Uh, yeah, he is one. Excuse me, he is one and though against Auburn. Uh, he came over last uh, year as a New Mexico State Rebel. Was able to win that game. Now you got to go in and win another really gritty matchup. He is not the favorite in this game. I thought they would be. They are not. But at the end of the day. He's coming right back in. I believe he has over 500 yards passing and nine touchdowns against Hugh Freeze teams. Maybe he just hates that guy, and maybe he's able to do it again this upcoming weekend, hand Auburn another loss, and continue at least a little bit of the magic that Vanderbilt has had this year. And then USC-Washington, I think, is a really fascinating one this upcoming weekend because these are two teams that they're out of the Big Ten race, they're out of the CFP race, they have really pride to play for the rest of the way, and with Oregon doing what they're doing up there in the Pacific Northwest, both these teams want as many wins as they can possibly get. They know that Oregon's going to be the standard going forward. They know that they're going to be compared to Oregon going forward. They just want to be the second one on that rung. And these are the two teams probably fighting over that spot. This is going to be a huge game. It's going to be one of those games that doesn't necessarily mean a ton when it comes to the CFP or anything like that. It's going to mean a ton to those players in those jerseys. It's going to be fascinating to watch this one unfold. And then we got to get into who needs to make a statement. Who needs to be that team that really comes forward and really plants their flag this upcoming weekend? 
I, it might sound weird, but I do think Georgia has to do it. I need to see Georgia do it again. I saw what I saw in, at Texas, and frankly, if that's the team you're getting the rest of the way, I don't know if there's a team in the country that is going to be able to stop that. That being said, you got to be able to come out against Florida and do it again. The problem with this team this year has not necessarily been they don't have that top-end level. It's that that top-end level isn't consistent. It's not there consistently enough, and they're going to have to change that this upcoming weekend. If they're able to go down there to Jacksonville, getting a dominating win over Florida, then I'm sitting there saying, okay, no doubt about it. This is one of the top ten or top two teams in the country, and they're firmly in the driver's seat, possibly in the SEC and possibly for a title. But as of right now, they're still maybe 1% of me. That might be a little bit worried about this team in terms of consistency. This weekend kind of put that to bed. And then Texas A&M, no doubt about it. You're walking into a very, very tough spot this upcoming weekend. There are moments where this could go bad very quickly. And I think for A&M, last week was an arrival. I talked about it yesterday. It's not a normal win. It's not like the Alabama win a couple of years ago where they were already 0-4 in conference. They finish 8-4 on the year. This is an ability to totally change your program going forward. Thing is, you lose this game this upcoming weekend, a lot of those guys that you have interested in committing, a lot of those guys that watch that game and said, man, this is the program that I really want to play for, is then going to look this upcoming weekend and say, this is a program that is not consistent at all. This is a program that's a little bit all over the place, and I don't know if I'm as confident in them going forward. So you're going to have to plant your flag this upcoming weekend. It doesn't have to be a a beautiful win. It doesn't have to be by a million points. It's got to be a win, no doubt about that. This weekend is Ohio State's to me. They need to win that game in State College. They need to win it. I don't want to say in dominating fashion. They need to look a lot better. It can't be one of those where you just clunk your way to the finish. Everyone, both those teams are just making mistake after mistake, and then Ohio State ekes out with a three-point win. They very badly need to find a way to win this game. They very badly need to look good at the very least while doing it. And I do think it's going to be a really, really tough battle. I think it's going to be back and forth. Ohio State, I have a lot of issues. I have a lot of questions right now. I could have zero by 4 p.m. on Saturday if they're able to handle business and handle it. At least go about their business all right. If you know Penn State goes crazy and go, has four touchdowns over 50 yards and does incredible stuff, maybe that's a little bit out of your control, although your defense shouldn't be giving up 50-yard passes. But at the end of the day, I do think it's going to be one of those games where Ohio State's got to get a win. they got to get a win where they look good doing it, and if they don't, then... I have a lot of questions about what this team can do this year and what Ryan Day's future is in Columbus, Ohio. Moving forward to the Group of Five game of the week, there's quite a few. Now, the Group of Five as a whole, not necessarily playing those marquee games this upcoming weekend, but USF FAU is a very interesting one. Obviously, those two South Florida teams, they're going to get after each other just a little bit, and I think this is one of those matchups that is not necessarily going to affect the American race. It's not necessarily going to be a huge one when we talk about the CFP, It is going to be a really fun one. Two teams that really want to get after each other, two teams that want to win this matchup, about as bad as really any other one on their schedule. So it's going to be really fun to watch that one, and I think there's a couple of playmakers on both sides that make that really, really fun. Then we got Hawaii-Fresno State. This is a very interesting game in the Mountain West because Fresno State just got themselves back into the fight. I think they still need a couple of things to go their way down the stretch to find their way into that Mountain West championship, but at the end of the day, Hawaii is a really interesting team. They're a team that is coming off a game. Braden Strager, their starting quarterback, had four rushing touchdowns in this game. I think he had four coming into the game in his entire career. So I don't know what happened there. But at the end of the day, they were able to get the win over Utah State. And now they move forward to a very interesting game this upcoming weekend. Whoever wins this one, especially Fresno State, but Hawaii absolutely can get back into the conversation, I think is going to be a huge one in the Mountain West down the stretch. And then... Memphis UTSA takes the cake for me, and it's really just one word. You're going to get points in this game. There's going to be points all over the place. I cannot wait for this game. The defense are have really struggled this year, especially UTSA in the second half of that game last week against Tulsa. It was downright ugly. But this could be a game that's decided in the 40s like, Tol- uh, like last game against Tulsa. So it'll be really interesting to watch this one. I think at the very least, this one will get fun in a hurry. And then we got to talk about the Heisman race. It feels like we have whittled this thing down. It feels like we got four guys, right? It feels like we got Cam Ward, Dylan Gabriel, Ashton JT, and Travis Hunter. Travis Hunter is not playing this upcoming weekend, so let's break down the other three. And Cam Ward is one that you got to just dominate another inferior team. This is a team that can stop the pass, that has that ability. They have not faced Cam Ward yet. That is the big time difference in their past defense compared to others uh, that have faced Cam Ward because this guy can do some different things. And I'm not suggesting that they stat pad in any way. 
I can say pretty comfortably he's got some ground to make up with Travis Hunter. If, if Travis Hunter keeps this thing up, then all these quarterbacks, all these running backs are badly going to need to make a couple of big-time plays down the stretch, and then we'll see what happens. You also have Dylan Gabriel, who actually sits at the top of the odds in a number of different places around the country. I would not have him there, but that's totally beside the point. This is a huge, huge game for him. He's going up against a defense with Michigan that is going to have probably at least three guys drafted in the first round of the NFL draft. So if he can get rolling, if he can go for 300 yards, four touchdowns, have a crazy day, he's going to be pretty firmly at the top of that conversation. And then you're going to have to figure out where you stand. But this guy's going to have plenty to say about it. Ashton Jainty is one of my favorite players in the country. I've made that abundantly clear at this point. But him and Hunter are in a very, very heated battle, at least in my mind. I think Hunter might have the very slight edge right now. But let's just say, you got a Friday night game. You got it standalone against a team that has the ability to stop the run, is a very solid team, but you should be able to beat them. You should be able to pretty comfortably beat them. And you're playing at 8 p.m. You're not playing at 10, 15. You're not playing at 11 p.m. at night where a lot of these voters have gone to sleep and they'll just wake up the next day and see your yards per carry. You have the ability to make a statement here. You have the ability to go for 200 yards, three touchdowns, and show everyone that you are the very best running back, possibly the very best player in the entire country. But you got to take full advantage of this upcoming weekend. You got to take full advantage on Friday night. And if you can, then this Heisman race becomes very, very close in a hurry. And then we got to get to the individual matchup of the week because this is something that I've had a really good time doing. I think it's kind of a confu- it's an interesting way to look a little bit more deep into these matchups because there's quite a few that I'm very interested in. The biggest one is the South Carolina defense and really their defensive coordinator against A&M's quarterback situation. How do you approach this game if you're uh, South Carolina's D coordinator because I don't know which quarterback's going to be out there to start the game. I don't know which quarterback's going to be out there to start the first quarter or the uh, second or the third or the fourth. I don't know where these guys are going to play. I don't know how they're going to use them. I don't know if it's going to be two quarterback approach. There's a million different things to worry about if you're South Carolina, how they approach this game, how they attack uh, this team and how different it looks comparative to the quarterback that's in is going to be really interesting to watch and it's going to be a load for these guys to deal with over the next couple of days. And then you got SMU against the Pitt run def- or SMU's run game or SMU's offense really in general against the Pitt defense because you have a uh, really really elite running backs on the side of SMU. You have a quarterback that absolutely can make you hurt with his legs. And then the Pitt front seven has some dudes, especially at linebacker. They got plenty of guys that can make some big big time plays, including Brandon George, who made a huge play in that uh, Syracuse game where ball just kind of fell into his hands. But at the end of the day, I do think it's going to be a huge matchup. If they're able to stop that running attack in particular, things get interesting in a hurry in that game. Then you got Chip uh, Kelly against this Penn State defense. He's going to have his hands full, and he doesn't necessarily have the offensive line to sit back there and say, you guys go handle your business, go be able to push him around, we'll run the ball to a win. I don't think that's the way that uh, Ohio State's going to be able to win this game. They're going to have to get creative in the run game. They're going to have to be able to find openings in different ways, and they're going to have to be able to help out that offensive line because they're not holding up for four quarters against that Penn State D-line. I can promise you that. So he's got to take full advantage of these slight openings that he's going to have in this game, and it's going to be fascinating to see if what game plan he has for them. But it's one of those weeks, man. It's one of those weeks where you have Penn State, Ohio State. You have Pitt, SMU. And then you're kind of looking around. You're trying to find that one game to watch. You're trying to find that couple of things to tune into. I promise there's going to be something to tune into. There's going to be some upset going on. There's going to be some team that's playing better than you thought. There's going to be some team that's just totally uh, giving up on their season, totally losing their season in front of our eyes. So definitely something to watch out for this upcoming weekend. We will be back tomorrow to break down the big time one this upcoming weekend with Ohio State Penn State. But thank you so much for tuning into the uh, GSMC podcast. Uh, excuse me. Thank you so much for tuning into the GSMC College Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us, so please remember to subscribe to the show, leave a positive review. It does make a huge difference. Also, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, all the social pages for all the content and updates you could possibly need. We have great people covering every sport you could possibly want, so definitely tune in to GSMC and we got you totally covered. But thank you once again for listening, and I will see you guys tomorrow for that big game breakdown.